welcome back. Uh, today I'm shooting a video that I've been wanting to shoot and I actually shot part of it for like three times now, but it was never the right time. Uh, today I'm doing the poorly timed review of the GoPro Hero 8 and Media Mod because I've been using it extensively uh, since the spring. But why didn't I do this back when it was relevant? Uh, there's the Hero 9 just came out last week. And, uh, well, I put it off for one good reason. It, I'd never had the, the uh, display mod. Uh, I'm gonna go into detail about that, but GoPros continuously push back the delay. I thought I was gonna get it in March, then I thought I was gonna get it in April, and then it said it won't be ready till July, and then July came around and said, said August, and then August came around and said September, and then here in September, we still don't have it, but we have the replacement for the entire camera. So uh, I wanted to do that, uh, and I was gonna wait to have like a comprehensive review, but uh, there was no display, and I guess I'm gonna have to do it without. So that's actually kind of part of it. Uh, the product is more or less incomplete. Um, so I kind of wanted to make this both a retrospective and like a review and should you consider getting the GoPro Hero 8 or the Hero 9? Now I think if you're gonna fork over serious money, take whatever I'm saying and then just figure the GoPro Hero 9 probably improved everything and is better because it's newer and you should just get that. But the GoPro Hero 8 still is for sale. You can still buy it and it's substantially cheaper. Maybe that might work in your price range. But prior to the GoPro, this is what I had. I had a Nikon, this is a uh, P510. This is one of those super zoom bridge cameras from like 2012, I got it in 2013. This camera is my favorite camera that I've ever owned because I used it so much. Even though it was old, anytime I would go anywhere, this is what I would take with me. Uh, I love the super zoom effect. Uh, it's fantastic. It doesn't have a mic input. Uh, the videos I shot for this channel, some of the early ones uh, two years ago, this is what I used. I liked it. I had a separate audio recorder, a task cam that I would use. Briefly, I had access to a Hero 5, but it got stolen. I barely did anything with it. And I also had an iPhone SE. That was it. Those were the two things that I had. So the first camera that I bought was the Hero 8. Um, and I got this back in February. I didn't get with the media mod right away. I ordered that shortly after. But this is what I originally wanted it for, was I wanted it for the the action camera element, the fact that it's small and you can put it on stuff. And, uh, and the other big thing that I wanted it for was uh, as a vlogging rig, I was so impressed by the, the footage from the Gear Hero 7 and the reviews from the Gear Hero 8 because it's a camera you can hold and talk to, and I like to do that because I like to ramble on and on and on, but this camera is so cool because it can do that and everything is nice. So I'm convinced like, you know, making videos, the first thing you want to get rid of is shaky footage. Uh, shaky footage is just unwatchable. And if you can get like nice to watch footage, it's just easier to watch and that's what I got it for. Now, I also got it where I needed like a wide angle camera because I wanted to, you know, to see a lot of stuff and uh, I was using it for uh, filming me doing kettlebell stuff so I could watch my form and it just, it looks better on this. Now, that was step one and then step two, uh, I wanted better audio and there was the media mod right here which is actually I keep just on the GoPro because most of the time I'm not taking it underwater or doing action cam stuff with it. Uh, the Media Mod comes with an upgraded microphone. Now it's this whole Media Mod thing is 70 bucks. I don't think your expectations for a $70 uh, microphone combo should be very high. Don't expect this to sound like something really great. Did it sound better? Yeah, I thought it did. I mean, it's it sounded better. Did it sound $70 better? Maybe not so much, but if you look on the back right here, it has audio inputs. So I could take a microphone, like which is on this camera right now, and I could strap it to the front of this guy uh, and have much better sounding audio. And that was like totally cool. That was worth it. That was, so, but figure that brings the price up from the media mod plus the microphone. The two of them together, about 130 bucks. Uh, now those, I was hoping the media mod would be useful for other versions of GoPros in the future, but with the GoPro Hero 9, it's not, it's not the case. So it's only good for this guy. Um, if the media mod came with the GoPro, which I think it should have been, I think it should have been a standard feature, and GoPro should have been trying to sell these things, getting people vlogging with their product. Um, 
So with the media mod I was and the two mic setups that I got, I was able to do three different audio configurations. One was just the media mod by itself. Say if I need it to be small and I need it to be covert, I don't want to carry this big giant thing that gets attention around. Uh, one thing that I've noticed is that with the larger mic on this thing, people will, I'll be vlogging or I'll be talking or I'll be doing something and people will stop me and ask me what it is like in the middle of something. And I'm always usually cool, I'll just cut and refilm it, but it's kind of like it gets attention and when you don't want attention, you don't want that thing on there. Uh, the wireless to go system, that I found was very useful um, recording someone else. I did a series of lectures that my uncle's a physics professor and due to COVID needed to record all his videos so I did that with him and um, for the last half of them we used this and it definitely sounded better and he was able to lecture and I was able to just get close and get the board and stuff and I used the GoPro for that and I thought it looked fine. I thought it looked great. Uh, but. That's kind of like very versatile, you know, this vlogging rig you can also use for all this stuff. So this media mod has the two cold shoe mounts. One you can use for your microphone input. Uh, uh, and then the other one, I even got the GoPro Lite. So if I want to vlog at night or do anything at night, uh, that's really cool. Like it, it's, it's so small, you keep it in a small little bag and you can have this lot of versatility in a small space. Uh, that was totally worth it to me. and. I would watch the videos that I would film and they sounded fine and the sh footage wasn't super shaky at all. Actually, it was very smooth. And that's the two things I wanted to fix. And did the GoPro Hero 8 fix them? Yes, it did. Now, there were other limitations with it. Uh, like, I'm doing this right here on a Nikon Z50 that I got after the fact. And yeah, this video is looking way better. It's not so bright out and it still looks good. The GoPro is really more of a, a daytime camera. You need bright daytime or really well lit room, but it looks good. It, but for I say for what you're paying for, does it look good? Yeah, absolutely. Now, if you're considering kind of making the transition I did, going from just like a phone and an old camera, or maybe all you have is your phone, the GoPro is like I really like the whole ecosystem but be warned there's a lot of stuff you kind of have to get uh, the one that I had a couple years ago that got stolen I didn't have any of the grips or the mounts or anything I think we would just put it onto a we had a bike mount and that was it but uh, you know I have three mounts like this and to really make this thing useful you kind of have to spend money on those mounts um, and once you got them it's just you know incredibly versatile but it's part of it so I really think like the the entry-level price is just kind of a teaser because you're gonna have to buy a bunch more stuff on there too and that goes if you buy the Hero 8 or 9 or if you're watching this in the future whatever it is they come out with uh, the camera by itself is not the most useful thing in the world so just holding the camera like this just how it comes out of the box it's not too great like I don't like vlogging like this at all I don't like doing that um, but it looks fine I mean as far as a digital camera goes for still photos I definitely th thought it looked way better than my iPhone SE 1 and I have an SE 2 now and I think it looks better than that um, if you want a serious camera for taking serious photos you know the larger sensor size is ultimately going to be what wins out uh, but they looked fine like a lot of the photos I took uh, at the Mint 400 race this spring I liked them I mean professional photographers can always do better someone can always do better but I look at them and I'm happy with them so some features that I really like on this camera uh, w one is I love the presets. You can go into your video mode and you can create your own little custom presets with the resolution, the frame rate, you know, however it is you like it, you can like make several of them. I think you can make 12 or 10 or 15 or something. Different presets so you can quickly go between them. So you can dial it down just how you want it for some setting and then do that 10 different times for different settings and just quickly go with them. I wish every camera had that. I wish this Nikon I was using right now, I could make a preset set the ISO, set it, uh, the shutter speed, set the everything where I want it, and then when I want to hit that, go, just hit the button and it just dials it right into that. And then if I'm doing something different, dials it right into that. Um, other than that, going and like actually like messing with it manually, it's a little tough, but the ProTune features were something that really brought me into the whole ecosystem. Like I want to like have a camera I could tinker with and do a lot of things with. Uh, 
there was one like the flat color and the uh, natural white balance, which is like they say industrial cameras use those, uh, or not the flat color, but the industrial, the um, natural white balance. That created like this whole new kind of like rabbit hole that I got to go down. I we even went and bought one of those data color. Uh, sheets to calibrate color and that's just like if you like tinkering around like that it's really cool now I know a professional when given that natural white balance is going to get better footage and they can manipulate way better than I can uh, and honestly to me if I just kept it in the regular pro color GoPro color profile and auto white balance it's gonna be good enough for just about anything I'm gonna do I don't really need to have that extra little bit but it's fun to play with and I really enjoyed learning about it because then I got to play with uh, Final Cut Pro and kind of see how they interact and see how to change colors and modify colors. So this camera has 10 bit color. Now I wasn't entirely sure what that was uh, but I saw a video by Jesse Wellens where he was reviewing the Mavic Pro 2, I believe, and it also the it also had 10-bit color, and they could do this cool color splashing stuff where you can actually change the color or the hue within a piece, uh, like and turn it around and make you know turn red into blue, and it's it's cool. It's and that's kind of a gimmick, but it's fun to play with, and uh, because 10 color you have a much bigger color range than 8-bit color, uh, it just works better. And a colorist who knows what they're doing, they're you know they have they're gonna know the best with it, but you, it, it gives someone who's not a colorist, who doesn't have a bunch of money to spend on high-end equipment, it gives you kind of like, you get to play the game. Not as well as a professional, of course not, but you get to do it, and you get to learn about it, and if it's something you want to do for fun, like, this brings it to you. So let me show you how the ND filters work. You just pop it on like this, and then you're good. That's it, and then that's kind of like the frame. And then you got three filters, and depending on what you need, snaps right on. So with these, you could fix the shutter speed to the 180 rule, which I saw in a David Manning video. And if you're not subscribed to David Manning, you like making cool stuff, go subscribe to his uh, channel, it's great. But uh, he's kind of who inspired me to get the ND filters, just because you can get more smoother footage. You can shoot at the low frame rate, and get like that cinematic look. Did I do it a whole bunch? Not really, but I did a bit, and I know that there are some times that, uh, there were some bright days and I had to shoot something and I put an ND filter on there and it just looked a lot better. Just, even with keeping with the auto settings, just with the ND filter on a really bright day, I thought just made it was a better product. So here's the ND cage on the GoPro, and here's the media mod. So if you're gonna be vlogging, you want the media mod because it's gonna sound better. And uh, so you go through the process of taking off the door. And I probably had to do this a hundred times by now, so I'm pretty quick at it. So you got your GoPro with your media mod. You have your Polar Pro adapter. This is like a magnetic little strip that it's fitted onto the GoPro, but it does not fit with the media mod on. And Polar Pro never made one of these that's compatible with the media mod. I wish they did. It would have made life so much better. It, it, it should have come with two of these things, one for the GoPro Hero 8 and one for the GoPro Hero 8 with a media mod. Because when you have the media mod on the Hero 8, you cannot use ND filters now. Which, it, it, it sucks. I mean, there were times, like, I, I thought it was gonna be this whole, complete, comprehensive camera, and it wasn't, because you can't, you have to make a choice. And uh, back in May, I filmed my dad on a bright day. And we had to decide, did we want good audio with the media mod, or do we want to look better with the uh, ND filter, because it was so bright. And we had to compromise, and I chose the ND filter, and then the external recorder, which gives it more work and defeats the purpose of the media mod. So there's kind of a compatibility issue that was like not, I don't think was well planned. Now this is kind of a minor thing, because you could just, you know, mess with the ISO and get it to where on a bright day you can still vlog with this, which I've done many times, but it's just like a lack of oversight. And I, I really think that's kind of what went wrong with this uh, product, was the lack of oversight. The fact that these are all supposed to be the same ecosystem, but they don't work together when they should have worked together, somehow there should have been a fix for it. So Camera Conspiracies mentioned how with the media mod it overheats and he lost video footage. And that sucks, that's horrible. Me, I probably have 25, 30 hours of footage that I caught through the media mod. 
I've never had it overheat and I've never lost any of it. So for that part, it's been positive for me. So uh, looking at that footage, I actually left out a couple things that uh, I wanted to tell you about. I never use the live streaming feature. Uh, I hear it's really cool. Um, you need a minimum of, minimum of a thousand YouTube subscribers, which I don't have, to activate it. Uh, and on Facebook, I don't know how much you need, but I didn't want to live stream on Facebook. Um, it seems like a really cool thing because you can link up your cell phone to your uh, GoPro, and then with the media mod and the nice microphone, you could do like live streaming out in the world with nice audio and nice video. Um, I think that'd be really cool. Uh, if I get a thousand subscribers, I'll do it. I also never use the burst uh, photo feature. Uh, it just didn't appeal to me. I wasn't really doing action camera stuff with it, like setting up like a skateboard or something. Uh, if that appeals to you, I think, I think it's probably really good because the photos look great. I would definitely say the photos look better than uh, like smartphone. Like this is an iPhone SE 2. This takes great photos. I think the GoPro takes better photos though. Um, it may be a little subjective, uh, but it's, they're definitely good for a small camera. Um, but just to let you know I never did that. Uh, anyway, I kind of want to, before I go back to the video, I do want to show you just a couple random clips and the type of stuff that I was doing as like tests and experiments. Uh, just to kind of see like what I was tinkering with. As I mentioned, this is a really great tinkering camera. That's something I didn't think I would like out of it. And that's kind of why I would recommend it is that it's so fun to tinker with this thing. You just kind of play with it and experiment with it because it's a little indestructible thing and you don't want to do it with the big fancy camera. So anyway, uh, check out the montage and then back to the video. The sun is actually setting right now and I'm going to compare this footage with the GoPro footage and you're going to see that the Nikon footage is definitely going to be better but I, you don't want to hold this thing. This camera is good for steady, this camera I can walk around with and I can have fun with uh, but at night it's not going to be all that great so it does come with limitations. All in all I'm actually very happy with the uh, GoPro ecosystem and the whole product lineup and everything too because I could buy parts of it over time to make it a more and more capable camera. Now if you're thinking about making YouTube videos and depending on what your budget is uh, let's say you only have a phone or an old point and shoe like I had those are really good those are really useful I like them this guy is a good one though because could, you could do so much with it and you, you know you have the nice stabilization and you have the nice audio options that's really like the two things that you 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 need most if, if, it, if it is stable to watch and sounds good you can forgive a lot of other things but if it's not stable and doesn't sound so great whatever else does well I don't think really matters so this definitely delivered on the two most important points in really the third thing was all the tinkering that I got to do really it was the tinkering on this thing that let me believe like hey I need a mirrorless camera uh, because I'm learning things on here that <clears throat> kind of motivated me to get something that's even more useful and then now that I have this experimenting with it uh, it's great so overall I think it was a great buy um, if you're gonna buy this now check your used market because you're probably gonna get some killer deal because people are replacing their nines uh, if you're thinking you need to sell your eight and then buy a nine I don't know, it depends how much you can get for your eight, depends how much on it. Now, if you have a lot of money to play with, just get the nine. Uh, and even if you don't, if you're like brand new into this and you don't mind spending a little extra more, I would get the nine. Um, if I didn't have it, I would get the nine and the media mod as well. Uh, a lot of people didn't like the media mod. I actually really liked it. I thought it was super useful for what it was for. And people are complaining about audio quality and it's like, one, it's, it's, a, it's a media mod that introduces ports and a microphone for under 70 bucks. Like my expectation on a $70 microphone is that it isn't gonna sound particularly great. I'm amazed by these Rode mics, how good they sound for 60, 70 bucks. 
when my uh, father did videography back in the 90s, you know, he spent hundreds of dollars on a microphone, hundreds. And you know, like he, when, he, when he heard that I bought this mic for 60 bucks, he was kind of impressed by how good it was because it's only 60 bucks because he spent $500 and that was in 1995. So 60 bucks gets, gets you in the game. So anyway, that is my poorly timed GoPro retrospective review. I hope that you liked it. Uh, I liked making it, so that's also important. You know, you should subscribe to my channel, and if you like what I do, uh, check out my business website, DonO'Neill.com. My videos are sponsored by me uh, through my business, DonO'Neill.com. I've got really cool California watercolor G clay prints, a lot of really cool stuff uh, here in the Inland Empire, Laguna Beach, up in the uh, Bay Area. I have a few. Uh, Really cool stuff, Europeans paintings. Uh, they're really great. My grandfather painted them. I took over his business. So go give them a watch, DonO'Neill.com. Uh, subscribe, leave your nice comments. Uh, I know these tech videos can bring out the absolute worst in people, so don't be an asshole in the comment section. Anyway, thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.